Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we are taking a look at the brand new Ubiquiti USW Flex Layer 2 Switch. Now, what is this thing exactly? This is a five port Layer 2 Switch. It's weatherproof, or at least outdoor rated of some sort, and it has one PoE in and four PoE out ports. This is basically used to kind of be like a PoE distribution hub to other devices. So let's go ahead and pop it open and take a look at this thing. It's actually a lot smaller than I thought it would be. The USW Flex retails for $99 USD. And according to the specs, oh wow, look at this thing. You know what, let me bring the camera close so you guys can see it too. Here we go, this is the USW Flex. Uh, according to the specs, if you are powering this, I'm only gonna be powering it with 802.3AF PoE, but if you're powering it with 802.3BT, it will apparently do up to 46 watts across the four output ports. So that's actually pretty decent. Uh, you know, most devices don't take nearly that much, like a phone, for instance, is gonna take, you know, four to five watts. Uh, you know, an access point is gonna take three watts, maybe four. So yeah, this is a pretty, definitely enough power to pass across these ports. It's kind of hefty, actually. It's a little bit heavier than I expected it to be. Uh, so it comes with a quick start guide that you can download with the QR code. Looks like a wall or pole mount bracket. Oh, I see. So this, uh, this it must be a wall mount bracket, and then this must be a pole or wall mount bracket slides up like so interchangeable that's a pretty neat design it also has uh, feet kind of so like these are like rubberized feet I guess that's to hold it up against the wall or you could just have it you know on a desk like so then the front pops out here now this says that it has a weatherproof housing uh, but I didn't see any sort of IP rating on it like the uh, IP 66 or 67 and honestly, this would be weatherproof because if you have it outside, you know, if rain's coming down the front, it's not going to sort of get up in there. But this also has a pretty good size hole in it. Like there's no weather protection this way. So any water coming up from the bottom, you know, is definitely going to get inside there. And certainly having a hole this big is also not great for like, you know, keeping bugs and spiders out and stuff. But it can be used outside, uh, no problem. It's definitely... I mean, it's almost like one solid piece. All right, let's see what else comes in here. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna fire this up while we're waiting. All right, so I'm powering this with a US 860 watt. Uh, here we have PoE in, and then one, two, three, four PoE out ports. Let's go ahead and power it up. I get a light immediately, and we'll check how that looks in Unify in just a second. The other stuff that comes in the box, you get a zip tie, couple of screws and uh, drywall anchors, another zip tie, and that looks like it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this thing adopted and then we will take a look at how it looks in Unify. All right, so solid white light on the device means that it is ready for adoption and in Unify, it is already showing up. So we can see that it's showed up here. Interesting that the model number, it's uh, USW Flex, I think is the official model number. Yeah, but in here it shows up as USF5P. So that's kind of interesting. Let's go ahead and adopt and upgrade this thing. Okay, so I've adopted it. I also changed the name to USW Flex. If we click on it here, we can see that the model number in here is still also showing Unify USF5P. Uh, there is an upgrade available, so I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade it now. So let's go ahead and run the upgrade, click upgrade, and yes, we're gonna go ahead and upgrade. Okay, so confirm that. Uh, the version of Unify that I'm on is 5.10.26, and so this is going to be upgrading to some sort of newer firmware. I didn't catch the version number though. Okay, so the USW Flex has been connected to Unify and fully up to date. The version number of the firmware is 4.0.54 as of the recording of this video. Let's go ahead and click on it and take a look. Uh, it should be relatively straightforward as far as setup goes. Uh, here we have the ports. If we edit one of the ports, well, let's edit the main in port. So the PoE in port does not have any option for setting PoE, that makes sense. I should note also that there is not a separate power supply. So you can only power this device with PoE. And then if we look at these other ports, 
So let's look at port two, for instance. Uh, here we have our switch port profile. So this is fully VLAN capable, uh, like I said, layer two switch. And then the PoE options are either just off or PoE. And then it looks like you have all of the rest of the same switch options, such as mirroring and uh, all this other stuff down here. So that's really all there is to it. Uh, let me actually plug in a couple of devices. You can see now, by the way, I don't know, maybe that's hard to see, but you can see that the uh, light is now solid blue, meaning that it has been adopted successfully to unify. Okay, so I'm gonna plug a couple things in here. I have a Nano HD. Let's go ahead and plug this guy in. And I have an orange light on the power here. It looks like it just powered it up. So it started off orange. That was probably auto sensing PoE. And then it uh, turned the link light on. I'm now getting a blinking, oh, it's hard to see with the cover on this Nano HD, but I'm getting a blinking uh, white light, which means this thing is booting up. Uh, I'm also gonna plug in this uh, Yealink phone right here. I'm running out of desk space. All right, here we go. So we're gonna plug in a Yealink phone also. Orange light at first, sensing PoE. And then finally the phone is now booting up. So I did a video not that long ago on the Ubiquiti Nano Switch, which is very similar to this device, except that one is for 24 volt passive PoE. So you can basically think of this as a Unify enabled Nano Switch for 802.3 AF devices. This one won't do 24 volt passive, but if you have an outdoor, you know, maybe like a solar installation, like my own solar setup, where you have a bunch of 802.3 uh, AF devices, this should work in that case. So interestingly, as I'm sitting here playing with this stuff, uh, the phone, I'm gonna unplug the Nano, the uh, Nano HD, the phone has rebooted a few times. So it makes me wonder, if you're powering this with 802.3 AF, it might really not be powerful enough to power more than like one of these devices. As I'm seeing here, it's not working that great. So you might actually have to use 802.3 BT if you want multiple 802.3 AF PoE devices plugged into the four switch ports, which of course would make sense because it's gonna supply more power to the USW Flex, which is gonna supply more power to the devices plugged into these ports. Unfortunately, I just don't have an 802.3 BT switch that I can use with this thing uh, in order to test that. So if you look at the sales page for this thing, it does say with 802.3 BT rated PoE switches. And it, it names the USW Pro 48 PoE, the USW Pro 24 PoE, and the USW industrial switches uh, sold separately. Uh, as a power source, USW Flex supports a maximum of 46 watts. So notice what they're saying there is, if you have one of these pro switches, you can power this thing with 802.3 BT. It doesn't say anything about 802.3 AF. So here I'm plugged into AF. This is actually running off of a US 860 watt switch and it's working, but really it seems to only power up one 802.3 AF device. So yeah, maybe it has to be 802.3 BT in order to, uh, to have a bunch of devices on here. So here's a look at the Unify Switch Industrial. I don't think this is early access, so I'm pretty sure I can be showing this. Oh yeah, I'm not even logged in. Um, so USW Industrial is 499, uh, and it has 10 RJ45 ports total, which offer PoE++ up to 60 watts for por per port. Uh, so that's 802.3 BT across 10 PoE ports. No, I take that back. It's 802.3 BT capable across eight of the gigabit ports, and then it has two extra, looks like just non-PoE ports. So coming back to the USW Flex, unfortunately there's just no additional specifications for this thing. So we don't have a ton of information about it. Let me look at that quick start guide. Okay, so in the quick start guide, it says that PoE in port one supports 802.3 AF, AT, or BT. You know, while I'm doing this, I wonder if I plug this into my bigger Unify switch, if that's gonna make any difference, or like maybe the US 860 watt is only 802.3 AF and I can do AT off of the bigger one. Uh, let me do that just as a test here. Oh, this is interesting. Look at, while, uh, while this is still booting up, it says magnetic mounting. Slide the wall mount into the rear panel of the switch until it snaps into place. Where's that wall mount? Place or hang switch on a magnetic surface. So is this wall mount magnetic? Oh, it is, look at that. Watch, well, I guess that's hard to see. What do I have that's metal? 
All right, so here is a uh, single gang box, right? Yeah, look at that. Magnetic. Cool. It looks like the cover splits in two as well. Let's see, how does this come apart? Oh, there it is. Yeah. So you put this in. You put this in first, and then you can put all your cables in uh, and then snap the cover closed. Uh, otherwise, yeah, that would be tough to <laughs> have to wire up your cables, uh, put the ends on the cables after you slide them through here. That would be a lot tougher. So that does come apart. That's neat. Oh, interesting. Looks like there's also special options for if you are powering this by a PoE injector. Yeah, and it says it can be powered by a 54 volt 1.1 amp PoE adapter or PoE injector. Oh, here we go. Okay, total PoE power budget. So powered by AF mode, total power budget of eight watts. So that's probably why it was having trouble with the phone and the Nano HD plugged in at the same time. So I've got the phone on there now and that should be fine. Let me also now plug in the uh, Nano HD. So yeah, the US 24 250 watt does PoE plus or 802.38T. The US 860 watt that I originally plugged in was only 802.3 AF. So now if we go back to the quick start guide so we can see when you're powering it by uh, AF, you get a total of eight watts of output. That's why it was having trouble with the Nano and the phone together combined. Powered by AT, you get a total of 20 watts of output which is why it's not having trouble when I'm plugging into my uh, US24 250 watt. And then when powered by BT, you get 46 watts or when powered by the uh, 54 volt 1.1 amp PoE injector. All right, so now both of these devices are solidly plugged in and working now that it has the correct amount of power. Let me try to also plug this G4 Pro camera in there because why not, right? Still hasn't powered up the G4 Pro camera I wonder if the G4 Pro requires 802.3AT, because this is only passing through AF. It's like it's trying, but it's not actually working. All right, so I'm going to assume that the G4 Pro requires, you know what? Oh, yeah, and then my, yeah, then the Nano HD just dropped. So it's definitely not really powerful enough to also handle the uh, G4 Pro. Well, looking at the G4 Pro's data sheet, it actually does say that it can be powered by 802.3AF but perhaps the phone, the Nano HD, and the G4 Pro when plugged into 802.3 AT power is just not powerful enough for all three of those devices. So I might be able to unplug one of these and then get the G4 Pro working. In fact, let's try that. So I know this is really hard to see, but you can see this orange light on the third port is just blinking, but there's no actual link light it means it's probably trying to negotiate the power needed for the G4 Pro camera, and it's just kind of not able to. All right, so looks like G4 Pro is maybe a little too heavy duty for this thing. Let's see if I can power just the G4 Pro with it. There we go. Okay, so yeah, I saw the lights there. So here you can see the G4 Pro is now starting to fire up. So when it's the only device in the USW Flex, yeah, it works fine. And I'm sure if I was powering it with 802.3BT instead of AT, uh, it would have a lot better experience as well. But there we go. There's the LED ring on the G4 Pro. All right, so there you go. There's a look at the USW Flex. It's kind of a cool little switch. What do you guys think? Put it down in the comments below. I know when I did the video on the Ubiquiti Nano Switch, I had a ton of comments from people that were like, that's cool, but I wish they had the same thing in 802.3AF. Here you go. Okay, here's the same thing in 802.3AF, and this one can be controlled by the Unify controller, whereas the Nano Switch has uh, no configuration interface whatsoever. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments below if you would buy one of these and what you would use it for. I'd be curious to hear about that. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.